Well, on that note, with our signed Jason Spezza card, we should probably start out at the top. That uh, nine, five points shy of a thousand, our dearly beloved Mister Jason Spezza uh, retires. He gets a Dwight Schrute sounding position, special assistant to the uh, general manager in Toronto, and um, it's an end of an era. Uh, Gita, this is uh, this was your ride or die. Yeah. How are we feeling today? I'm. I'm okay. <laughs> I've sl- <laughs> well, that's the thing. It was it was kind of like when Peyton Manning retired. I'm like, I've watched him play a lot. <laughs> um, what they're like, apart from like COVID, I I never missed one of his appearances in Vancouver. Yeah. Um, so I was kind of I was at peace with that decision. Yeah, it's a bummer that he didn't get to a thousand points. I mean, you know, I'll still hold my breath for the Hall of Fame. But the thing is, like, from everyone's account, this is the nicest guy in the world and deserves nothing but the best. And honestly, when he was given this made up position of special assistant to the general manager, immediately I was like, he's going to be president of the Leafs. I was like, that that is the only trajectory. Shanahan and Dubas can't keep their job and status quo forever. But they can and they will. They will. Or will yeah. they? I don't know, but they... Who are you going to believe, Arash or me? You're going to believe Gita. Mm. You should. I'm <laughs> completely... Just mark my words today here on this podcast. Jason Spezza will be president of the Leafs. How much time are you giving him? One year, <laughs> maybe two. <laughs> September. <laughs> There's going to be some growing pains he comes out and says. I, um, yeah, I list, I, uh, read a great article. I believe it was Luke Fox on sportsnet.ca talking about, um, uh, just the positive influence that Spezza had on the Leafs in, in the last three years he was there. And it's just making, taking the time with anybody. If you're an ECHL call up at training camp or, you know, a black ace, like he, you know, made the effort and, for such a goofy, fun-loving guy, I absolutely love and ad- admire the hell out of him for his like motto and his outlook on the career being adapt or die. Like you have to, you have to evolve constantly. You can't just sit there and be Danny Heatley. And it makes so much sense based on how he kind of fit in every single role possible in Toronto. Like he adapted to to stay in the league and to to keep playing and keep being a uh, an an impactful presence. So. I admire the hell out of him, and he went out on his own terms. Mm-hmm. Um, I would have. I mean, there's a question a little bit later on. We'll get to, but you know what? I wish Mike Babcock played him that uh, first game. He would have got five points that game. Everything would have been fine <laughs> and dandy right now, but they can't. But uh, he should be in the Hall of Fame, probably. Kevin Lowe's, and Kevin Lowe's in the Hall of Fame, maybe. Man. By that, by yeah, that iteration, like Stanley Jeff Caps. Cowan should be in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> Good guess. Anytime I'll have a chance to take a shot at Kevin Lowe, I'll do it. But um, I mean, Jason Spezza. I mean, it, you know, I, I one of the first kind of one of the first players of um our generation. I think that we saw drafted and retired like their full career. You know that yeah. we yeah. really remember. Um, you know, for mm-hmm. us, it's going to be very weird when like I think like Sydney and OV retire. Yeah. Like, uh, well, okay. Yeah. I was just thinking about it earlier because if you want to put it into numbers, I've been watching Jason Spezza for 23 yeah. years. Jeez. Yeah. Just crazy. And like, you know, he's part of. That's like more than all our, like, half our lives. Like, like we've, I personally have been invested in this career for so long. Well, yeah. And like, yeah. you think, you think about, you know, the career trajectory and what, you know, where he could have been and, Everything. So he's drafted by. So I'm not sure. Was he drafted? I don't think he was drafted by the Islanders. He was traded with Chara he, and the pick. He was drafted second overall by Ottawa. Yeah. He was. Yeah. He was in. He was the pick essentially. In the Yashin trade, I think. Right. Yeah. And yeah. so then he goes on to you know towards the AHL at the time comes back comes up to the to the Sens. Well, yeah. Rash, n- not to cut you off, but he torched the AHL during an NHL lockout, and you all eyes were on you know whatever farm team that big hampton senators or whatever they were at the time and they had a lot of coverage like his stock and his kind of notoriety and uh just knowledge of his ability like Mm -hmm. went through the roof and like he was he had that franchise nickname and it was quite you know 
quite accurate and to cut and like how good those senators were mm-hmm. in his rookie season like it's like yeah he he became very well known for all the right reasons in this country. yeah i mean well he came out and um you know yeah he did spend that weird lockout season where you know he scored like 120 points and it was like belleville would bring him to one of the one of those teams one of those ahl teams but you yeah, don't know yeah. belleville he belleville was his last uh OHL okay team. great um, so Binghamton yeah. was the senator's oh, AHL Ontario, team. baby. A lot of B names. Um, yeah, so then... <laughs> Binghamton's in New York. Oh, is it? Oh, well, there you go. Oh, damn. Well, <laughs> uh, that's why you shouldn't listen to me, guys. Again, another reason why I shouldn't listen to Rush Mercy. Don't worry. I'm here to fact check Jason Spezza's I'm trying to. I'm trying to <laughs> praise Jason Spezza. Let me praise Jason Spezza. <laughs> um, yeah, he has the crazy, crazy season in um, Binghamton, and then he's he's part of... You know, one of the most elite lines of, I think the twenty, the two thousands to the twenty ten, like that that specific decade where it's Alfred, Alfredson, Heatley, Spezza, take them to the O six final against Anaheim. Um, obviously, Anaheim was a buzzsaw that year. You know that, um, but that was mm-hmm. again another run, another one of those like traditional Canadian runs right after you know Calgary had went to the Stanley Cup final and. Um, right. Ed, and Edmonton and everything. Edmonton. Um, mm-hmm. I'll never forget that goal he scored on Jose Theodore, where he just like turn styles like three three players and then just goes glove side on Theodore on the backhand, score that goal. One of the greatest laughs of all time. I- um, <laughs> and yeah, I like for a person that just absolutely loves lanky playmaking centers for whatever reason. Jason Spezza was one of the quintessential players of our generation in terms of that um and yeah just what hell of a career just really hell of a career and i, I don't think we've ever heard one bad thing ever said about jason no. spetz in terms of him as a person any controversy anything well apart from everyone calling him a goon in december <laughs> well you know slight rage yeah, issues yeah. into your 30s I guess. <laughs> adapt or die adapt or die <laughs> adapt or die and listen here here is the positive now that he's a retired player It'll be a little bit. It'll still be difficult, but our chances of getting our 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 pucks on that Jason Spets interview yeah. increase a bit more. We'll we'll exploit and exhaust our contacts back east, and we'll make it happen. Let's do it. Um, yeah. No, I think my fondest Jason Spets memory is has not being able to get a photograph with him. <laughs> yeah, we did encounter him at a cact, uh, cactus club, a rash, uh, many moons ago, where. We knew because I worked. I worked next door at Shaw, and you know, you'd always know the the NHL teams were in town. And we were driving back from going to the game, or attempting to go to the game. But I'm like, we're gonna track down these Dallas Stars if it's the last thing we do. And uh, I was driving a, uh, a car to go, smart car, and I'm like, <laughs> there's there's the Dallas Stars. They're getting in the Cactus Club, and I push Gita. You know, the car might have been stopped. It might have been still moving. He the pushed me out was, of a moving car, and he's like, go, go, go. And then I'll park this piece of shit. Yeah. Tell the stars were seated in the lounge area of the Cactus Club in Cole Harbor, so I go get two bar seats. Nice. <laughs> yeah. And we uh, we sit there, and <laughs> and I think I went to go to the bathroom. You went Tyler's... to go to the bathroom because it wasn't me at the urinal. <laughs> I yeah, it was Tyler Sagan at the urinal, and I was about to be like, "Hey, this is." I, in my mind, I'm like Tyler Sagan. I hate to be like this, but I've, I'm with a good, a dear friend of mine, a very big Jason Spezza <laughs> fan, the most non weirdo Jason Spezza fan I can, I that I, you can come across. Could we say hi and introduce? It? And right as I was about to do that, some dude shit faced at the stall to his right, like, "Hey, again, <laughs> And I'm like, "Well, not doing that." <laughs> you gotta shoot your shot, Ryan. I'd also, <laughs> I'd also outside. like just kind of time it so that we both washed our hands and like walked out of the bathroom, and then I would be like, "Oh, hey, what's <laughs> How you doing, man? How, how you doing? Great." I couldn't have done it. No fan reaction would have looked, or fan interaction would have looked good when no. Trunk McKenzie was there, uh, ready to talk about that Boston Bruins trade. 